Hello everyone, um, this is Rosanne Sprute from the University of Cologne and today um, I would like to give you a brief overview of the most recent uh, ECMM guideline uh, on the management of candidiasis. Um, in February this year, the Global Guideline for the Diagnosis and Management of Candidiasis um, was published in Lancet Infectious Diseases. And this was a huge collaborative effort of uh, three main societies, the European Confederation of Medical Mycology, the International Society for Human and Animal Mycology, and the American Society for Microbiology. Um, and the whole document contains uh, 227 pages and 56 tables with recommendations. Um, so it is safe to say that we really try to cover every aspect on the clinical management of candida disease, including superficial infections and including invasive infections. And this work was done by 104 authors from six continents and over 130 institutions. And we are very happy to say that the guideline was endorsed by 73 national and international societies in the field of infectious diseases, microbiology, and other specialties. Um, but why do we need a new guideline? Um, and there are a lot of guidelines around national guidelines, a lot of high quality guidelines, uh, but the last really over regional guidelines from Europe, the ESCMID guidelines, um, are from 2012. And the last um, guidelines from the United States from the IDSA are from 2016. Uh, so those guidelines are quite old. Um, and this is why they cannot really cover any aspect of candida disease, because so much happened during the last years in medical mycology. For example, um, we found a new pathogen. And of course, I know uh, Candida auris was first described in 2009, um, but we just learned during the last years how to deal with it and how to diagnose it properly, uh, how, to, uh, how to manage the infection. And um, Candida auris is not mentioned in any of the um, ESCMID guidelines or IDSA guidelines. Um, however, it is addressed in the new ECMM guideline, and I don't want to walk you through all the recommendations, um, but uh, what I want to highlight with this slide is that uh, Candida auris is covered in the new guideline in actually every topic from infection prevention and control um, on the susceptibility testing and the obstacles and difficulties in susceptibility testing for candida auris um, up to um, treatment recommendations. What else happened during the last uh, 10 years? Um, we saw a significant shift in species distribution and um, we see that more and more resistances are emerging and uh, this is well described now in different projects, for example, the ECMM Candida 3 study. And what we also learned is that we see more and more fluconazole resistant Candida parapsolosis, uh, where we realized that this, um, this uh, pathogen is also able to cause outbreaks. So there we also learned a lot. And uh, we have new diagnostics or um, not that much new diagnostics, but we also learned or even more important, maybe um, we have better validation for our um, diagnostics that we already have in place. For example, for new um, patient populations, um, for uh, we learned a lot about um, combination there, uh, combination diagnostics, a combination of diagnostics for better sensitivity and specificity. Um, we learned how to use diagnostics in treatment monitoring and response assessment. And we had the privilege during the last years to observe and sometimes also to contribute to the clinical development of several new antifungals. And I think this is really special. Um, sometimes I hear from colleagues uh, that are working with bacteria or viruses 
that they really wonder how this happened in medical mycology, that we have such a strong pipeline with new antifungals. And one of them is resafungin uh, for the treatment of invasive candidiasis. And um, I don't want to go into detail with the study content because uh, there are several other videos um, that are covering um, covering um, the single, um, the different uh, topics like um, how to use resafungin or where to where to use resafungin. Uh, but I just want to highlight here that resafungin is now recommended as a first line therapy for candidemia based on recent study findings. Uh, and there are other new drugs, for example, abrexafungerb, an oral glucane synthase inhibitor, or otoziconazole, a so-called tetrazole, an azole with a low affinity to human ZIP um, enzymes that have been tested for as treatment options for superficial candidiasis, uh, leading us to uh, two new strong recommendations with the quality of evidence of one for ibrexafunger for the treatment of vulvovaginal candidiasis and otosoconazole for recurrent, uh, recurrent um, episodes of vulvovaginal candidiasis. Um, and we should also not forget isovoconazole. Um, it may feel that isovoconazole is already quite an old drug, but it was approved in 2015, so fresh on the market when the IDSA Candida guideline was published. And since then, we have learned a lot about isovoconazole. Um, based on the active trial, we know now uh, that isovoconazole did not the 15% non-inferiority margin compared to caspofungin for the treatment of invasive candidiasis, leading us to only a marginal recommendation of isovoconazole for the first-line treatment of candidemia. And this is bringing us to another important topic, uh, the topic of open questions and areas of uncertainty. Um, that are equally important to point out because I think the unresolved questions in our field allow us to tackle them with future studies. So this is also very important to highlight. Um, for example, ophthalmoscopy. Um, we still don't know uh, who needs screening and when we have to perform the screening at which time point of the disease. And um, the same, we more or less have the same questions for treatment duration. Are there patients where we can treat shorter? Um, uh, which patients are those and how long should we treat? Um, because the 14 days um, are, are based on study designs from the 1990s and now, uh, 1990s, uh, sorry, <laughs> And now um, these recommendations uh, have been challenged during the last years. While we still do not have a final answer, um, the ECMM guideline maintains this recommendation but takes a more nuanced approach uh, that gives some room for adoption to different patient populations. Um, for ophthalmoscopy, for example, we would like to screen everyone, but we acknowledge um, that this is not feasible in most hospitals due to um, capacity reasons. And therefore, uh, we recommend to at least screen patients that we consider at risk. And uh, we also acknowledge that the 14-day treatment duration may not be needed for every patient, but that we have not defined these populations for shorter treatment durations yet. Okay, so all this is covered in the new ECMM guideline. And um, in the last minute, I would like to ha have a look uh, on the manuscript with you together. So this is a screenshot of the main manuscript. Um, the main manuscript itself is 14 pages long, and it summarizes the most important recommendations for the diagnosis and treatment of candidemia and some forms of invasive candidiasis. However, you will find uh, nearly everywhere in the main manuscript references to the supplement, um, already in the abstract as <laughs> highlighted here. And in the supplement, you will find, well, actually everything. So that is the document I talked about in the beginning with the 227 pages. 
And you, you can find all the evidence summaries from our literature search, the um, evidence tables and flowcharts, and many entities uh, of candidate disease that are not covered in the main manuscript. Uh, and um, this also includes a whole section on candidiasis in children. I would really like to highlight this because this is more or less a guideline in the guideline, thanks to our colleagues from pediatrics. Um, and with this, I would like to end. I do hope that you found this uh, brief overview helpful for orientation. And I do encourage you to take a look at the full global guideline, including the appendix and also our other videos on the topic on, at this channel. Uh, on behalf of all co-authors, uh, I thank you for your attention. Thanks.